In space, a ship called the Prometheus crashes, leaving many of its crew stranded on an unknown desert planet. It turns out that it is a military unit taking a prisoner. But after the crash, he has managed to escape, and has also managed to steal a weapon. And now he is firing at the soldiers. The commander of Centurion 7 operations returned fire, but soon missed the target, and was himself wounded. He contacts Cleo on his personal computer, but discovers that he has accidentally dropped Cleo. But the army man takes the risk, and activates the system connection with the base. The commander reports the ship crashing, and the prisoner escaping, and he is told they are sending a nearby ship to help them, but it will take 100 hours for the ship to arrive. Additionally, they are ordered to capture the fugitive alive at all costs. Cleo administers an injection to the injured man, and reveals the location of the escaped prisoner, who is a kilometer away from them. The soldiers go to the ship to get some essential items. The planet is lifeless and does not appear on any map. The atmosphere here is thin, so Cleo suggests soldiers not take off their helmets until their bodies have acclimated to the planet. Here, the day is 33 hours, and the night is only 5 hours, which seems like heaven to the soldiers. The commander informs them that there are only 3 days left to capture the escaped prisoner, and orders them to depart, but before leaving they take the remains of the ship to use as a shield and set out. They soon spot the fugitive, but the soldiers are too tired. Furthermore, it is very hot on the planet. They do not understand how the prisoner can move so fast in these conditions. The soldiers suggest to the commander that the prisoner will die of thirst. Then they can take him easily, but the commander reminds him of the order to take the prisoner alive. When the lieutenant asks the commander why, he does not tell him anything. So he argues with the commander, as it was a simple transport mission and many of his men were killed. The soldiers advance, and Cleo informs them that the prisoner should be nearby. Just then, the commander spots him. But the escaped prisoner prepares an ambush, firing at the incoming enemies and killing the commander. The lieutenant orders the remaining soldier to pick up the commander's rifle and go around the rock formation. The soldier does just that, and when he notices the enemy, he shoots him. The lieutenant orders him to stay away from the enemy and not to go near, but intoxicated with success. He does not listen to him and runs to the place where the prisoner was shot, but he only finds his cloak, and just then the prisoner comes from behind and attacks him. In the encounter, the soldier's helmet breaks, and it becomes clear that these are creatures of an extraterrestrial race called the Sidonians. The prisoner thrusts a knife into the soldier's neck and kills him. The lieutenant also reaches the spot of firing and finds the soldier dead. Just then, the commander arrives, who surprisingly survived. The lieutenant sets up a security beacon at night and takes shelter in a cave for the night. The lieutenant contacts Cleo to find out about the commander's condition, and she lists the injuries and the measures he has taken. The lieutenant orders the commander's body to be stabilized and the concentration of painkillers reduced so that he cannot travel tomorrow, as he does not want to take the commander with him tomorrow. The next morning, Cleo gives the pair permission to take off their helmets. The lieutenant is surprised that the prisoner is alive despite not even having a life suit. The commander explains that those creatures are not affected by any air or atmosphere because they can do so. The lieutenant forces the commander to explain why this mission is so important. The commander reluctantly explains that the prisoner is very dangerous. We have destroyed his planet, and now he is the only survivor of his race. He is threatening to destroy our planet in retaliation, so it is important to capture him alive. The lieutenant is angry that the commander needed to inform his squad about the danger of the mission, which led to his men being killed. The quarrel turns into a fight, but the commander manages to bring the lieutenant into obedience. Then suddenly a shot is heard from behind the rock, and the commander dies. The lieutenant hides behind a rock and contacts Cleo, who informs him about the direction of the prisoner's escape. The lieutenant takes the dead commander's weapon and walks away. It is very hot on the planet, and there is no vegetation, there is only sand and rocks. The lieutenant pursues the escaped prisoner, and Cleo informs him that the prisoner has stopped moving. Probably, he might have become a victim of dehydration due to heat and thirst. The lieutenant tracks him down but only finds his tracking device. It turns out he managed to get it out of his neck. Just then, the sand behind the lieutenant moves, and a fugitive appears from there who manages to stun the warrior. The prisoner finds a special device in the enemy's bag and takes off the helmet. It turns out that the prisoner is an earthling human. The man leaves the scene, and when the lieutenant regains consciousness, he discovers that the prisoner has taken Cleo with him. He tends to his wounds and then returns to the scene of the commander's death, where he picks up the commander's Cleo. Meanwhile, the prisoner drinks water from the enemy's supplies. 
bandages wounds and refreshes himself with his own products. He later trees to activate a Cleo and reveals his identity as Jericho, but Cleo registers him as an unregistered user and terminates access. Apart from this, she contacts the lieutenant and sends Jericho's location. The lieutenant heads in the direction of Jericho's location while Jericho falls asleep under a rock to rest. Taking advantage of this, a local animal gets into his clothes and starts sucking his blood. Jericho captures it and eats it alive, but then he sees the lieutenant and deactivates Cleo. The lieutenant yells that, without communication, they will not be able to get off the planet. A fight occurs between them, and Jericho admits that he intends to take the enemy with him. Otherwise, he would have killed him long ago, leading the lieutenant to threaten to kill him now before the rescue team arrives. Jericho begins to run away, and the lieutenant pursues him. Soon they meet face to face near a deep crevice. Jericho tells him to give up and go home, as he still has a home. However, the lieutenant disobeys him and shoots him with a projectile, which hits Jericho in the shoulder, and he is injured. Jericho loses his strength and sits down to rest in the shade of a rock. He hides the enemy's weapon in his boot, and then contacts the lieutenant. From their conversation, it becomes clear that the humans had given shelter to the Draxians, the Sidonians' enemy on Earth, which is why the Sidonians destroyed the Earth and wiped out the human race. Jericho says that now he will take revenge and destroy their planet. The lieutenant offers Jericho to surrender and go with them to save his life, but he refuses. The race continues, and soon the lieutenant finds Cleo, left by Jericho, on the bones. He does not understand why the enemy did this, and Cleo also cannot uncover his plane, but informs her about an insidious plane. He soon realizes that Cleo's charge is draining, so she turns off the commander's anesthesia. Due to the cluster of the medical unit, the pain from the lieutenant's wounds increases and his movement slows down. However, he tries to carry out his plan and remains patient. Cleo receives a message from orbit, and an unknown ship lands on the planet. It turns out that the ship belongs to Draxon, which does not cause joy for the lieutenant. At this moment, a flying arrow penetrates Jericho's body, and he loses consciousness. The lieutenant reaches the location, finds the arrow, and follows the trail. When Jericho regains consciousness, he sees that he is being dragged to the ground. The alien admits that he is an intergalactic bounty hunter and intends to sell Jericho to the Sidonians for a huge sum of money. But then the lieutenant arrives there and starts fighting the bounty hunter. Taking advantage of the opportunity Jericho runs away from there. The lieutenant kills the bounty hunter and pursues Jericho. He injures him, captures him, and ties him up. He then contacts Alpha Base and is told that a ship will be arriving soon to pick them up. The lieutenant sends them his location and starts waiting. He begins to talk to Jericho, and reveals to him that he is a lieutenant of Earth's military forces, adding that he has managed to send a ship equipped with nuclear explosives to the planet Sidonia, which will destroy Sidonia. So it is important for him to survive, because only he knows where this huge ship is. This argument forces the lieutenant to think, as there are many women and children on his planet who are not responsible for this war. He reveals that he has a wife and a child of his own, and he wants to meet them again. Jericho feels that he is doing something wrong, so he agrees to reveal the location of the ship. The lieutenant gives him access to the Cleo, and Jericho reveals the location of the secret ship to Alpha Base. However, soon after this, the lieutenant receives orders to eliminate the prisoner. The lieutenant says that he lied, he has no children and no wife. Jericho says that there is no need to worry when your planet will be blown to pieces. It turned out that he had deceived the Sidonians by not revealing the true location of the ship. Jericho attacks the lieutenant, as he was freed a long time ago. They fights for a long time, but in the end, the lieutenant loses consciousness. Jericho lifts him over his shoulders, and takes him to the landing site of the rescue ship, where he admits that they never actually launched the ship. They didn't know where the planet Sidonia was located, but now, he has gained access to their database, and will find out everything he needs. It was not by chance that they fell on this planet, he had a hand in it. Apart from this, the ship equipped with nuclear weapons, which they are searching for, is hidden on this planet. Jericho says that now the Sidonians will become extinct, just like the Earthlings. He reveals that unlike the lieutenant, his wife and son are alive on Earth. Jericho then dons his enemy's attire and goes to meet the Sidonians, the crew of the rescue ship. As the soldiers get closer, he attacks and kills them. Meanwhile, the lieutenant manages to free himself and pursues Jericho, aiming to kill him. However, he doesn't do this. Jericho enters the ship and launches it. But as he takes off, he discovers that the lieutenant has removed Cleo's chip. 
the lieutenant contacts Alpha Base, and Jericho overhears the conversation, in which the lieutenant refuses to carry out the command's criminal orders. While Jericho is tracking Sidonia's coordinates, the lieutenant intends to escape the planet via the bounty hunter's ship, which he believes should be nearby.